What's up guys? This is Brent with Western Equipment and in this video I'm going to be telling you all about the John Deere Z960M. To start, let's talk a little bit about model number as in the John Deere mower lineup, there are tons of different model numbers and sometimes those can get confusing. So on the Z960M, starting with the first letter here, the Z, this is going to be the broad indicator that this is a Z track mower. Now the next digit is going to be your series indicator. So within the Z track mowers, we're gonna have Z3s, Z5s, Z7s, and lastly Z9s, which are also gonna indicate that this is a commercial mower. Now the last two digits here within the Z9 lineup is going to indicate sort of the engine size and some of the specific features to the mower. So here with the 60, we're at the higher end of that Z9 spectrum as there's only one model higher than that, which is going to be a Z970 but that is going to be in the R class, which right here we are in an M. So the last letter here is going to indicate the trim level. So this is all gonna to have to do with features of the mower. So within the Z900 series, we are gonna have E's, starting with the Z915E, then we're gonna jump up into the M series where we have the Z920M, 930M, 950M, and 960M. So we're at the top of the, e, of the M trim level here. Then we're also going to have the Z930R, the Z950R, and the Z970R. So that is how we break down the model number. Now let's go ahead and move to the back to the engine. The Z960M is going to be equipped with a 31 horsepower FX series Kawasaki engine. So if we look right here on the side, it is going to say John Deere 31 horsepower. But if we look at the back of the engine here, you're also going to see the Kawasaki sticker to make sure and ensure you that this is a Kawasaki engine. Now, the, like I said, this is gonna be in the FX series, which means that it is in the highest range of engines that go on these mowers. Now in other series of the Z-Track mowers down in the Z, fives and Z7s, we're gonna have those FR series engines and FS. So then moving all the way up to the FX now in the Z900 series, you do have that commercial grade engine. Now, some of the maintenance points on this engine, we'll start over here on the left-hand side. On the left-hand side, we are going to have our fuel filter right over here. And then this is a V-twin engine. So we are going to have two spark plugs. They are gonna have easy access, one right over here and then one right over here on the corresponding side. But also over here on the left-hand side, one thing I like to point out is where our vacuum fuel pump is. This is a good place to remember in case we're having any of those fuel issues. Very easy part to change out, but can cause you issues if you're having those fuel troubles. And then right here on top, we have our large commercial grade air filter system. Once again, very easy to get to. Also very easy to open as we can just open these two clamps open this up and then we have full access to our air filter system and then also here on the cap you are going to have a dust release here so once we go out if we've been mowing in those dirty dusty conditions good idea is to just go ahead pop this off and open up the side of this cap or you can leave it on the machine here as it does point down and go ahead and open it just from right there make sure and keep that air filter nice and clean then next moving over here to the right hand side is where we're going to have our oil components so right here we are going to have our oil fill and dipstick so you can see as we pull this out we do have our dipstick here easily accessible to check the oil and then right below that we are going to have our oil filter and then also our oil drain. Now this oil drain's interesting because instead of having a tube or a hose, it is simply just a petcock that we have to turn to open a valve and that allows that oil to drain out right down through that hole there to allow for an easy draining whenever we're doing that oil change. Now, two of our other main service areas are gonna be underneath the seat. And yes, it is going to be dirty underneath here. As you can imagine, being underneath the seat is where a lot of the dirt and debris ends up. But what we're gonna have here is we're going to have the service ports to get to our transaxles. Now the transaxles on this machine are going to be the heavy duty, tough torque, commercial grade transaxles. And you are gonna have one for each side, but they are both serviced by the same 
Reservoir for hydraulic fluid. So right here in the middle, you will see this hydraulic cap here. This is going to be where we go to do, to fill that oil. It's also going to have a sight gauge right next to it, to where you can see where your oil level's at to make sure and fill that to the correct capacity. So also right in front of that is going to be our battery. What's nice is is that it is held in here by a nice rubber strap. So that's not going anywhere. And it's also really easily accessible as soon as we get underneath this seat. Now, as you see here on the seat right here is our grab lever. So that is mounted onto two hooks right here at the bottom. So to get underneath this seat, we're simply gonna pull this lever out and then raise up on the seat. And then to close it, we're just gonna let this drop down. That hooks into place and that keeps our seat good and solid in place there. And before we move into the operator station, let's talk about our ROP system here, or rollover protection system. Now, this is going to be up and in place anytime that we're on a sloped surface or whenever we're working on hillsides, anytime when we're having to wear that seat belt, just to make sure that this will keep the machine from rolling over on top of us. But if we are in those situations where we're around these low-lying trees like we have here, this is easily folded back. We simply have a two-pin system on a cotter key here, one on each side, where we can undo those, pull these pins out, And once those are folded, pulled out, we can fold this back. Now we have a position here where we can fold this ROPS. We have one here, or we can go all the way down to this bottom position. All that just depends on what you need it, how far you need it down. But for this instance, we'll go ahead and put it in the all the way down position. And then we're just gonna slide that pin back in. Go back in with our cotter pin and then the same thing over here. And then we would lock that one in place too. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back into the up position. Just like that. And then also right down here on the side, we are going to have our service interval chart. So just keep that in mind. If you have any questions about when you need to be doing service and maintenance on this machine, you are gonna have that chart right here on the inside, always on board with you, where you can always see that very easily. Now, before I hop on, I would say that the seat here, you do have three different options on this mower. What we have on this one here today is going to be the top of the line seat. It's gonna be a fully adjustable, weight adjusted seat along with all of the adjustments you could think of. So for one, we're gonna have this dial here in the middle where we can either dial this up or down to make sure and fit our weight. That way we get the type of ride quality that we want. So for me being a bigger guy, I can dial this all the way up, making sure I get a nice ride quality out of this machine. You're also gonna have adjustable armrests here where we can adjust this set screw to adjust the height in which these will go down or stay up just for operator preference. You're also going to have a fore and aft on this seat of the back. So over here, we're gonna have a turn dial knob that we can simply turn forward, we'll push that seat forward. And if we dial it back here, we can lean that seat back. So once again, just another comfort preference there. And then below here, we are gonna have the comfort glide system. So this has a three position setting. If we go all the way to the right, that's gonna allow this seat to slide back and forth, making for a nice smooth ride. Or we can move it all the way over to the left and then we can pick our seat position if we need to be a little further forward, a little further backwards, and then move that back to the middle position to lock it into place. Now, most of the time what I do is go ahead, find that position, go all the way to the right and allow this seat to slide with that comfort glide system. It just makes for a lot smoother ride. So that is a nice feature about this seat. But now I'll go ahead and hop on get in the seat of this mower and let's go over some of the controls here. Now, of course, we are gonna have our operator levers here. Very easy, have nice grips on them, grips that go down on some of the curvature here. So you can pick a diff different spots for your hands depending on where you like to hold them. So that's a very nice feature. They're also gonna be adjustable up and down and fore and aft. So once we have these in, if you need a little more room, we can go up or we can go down and we can position them to where they lean a little more forward 
or lean just a little closer to you for whatever preference you have there. And that is gonna go along with the adjustability of this seat so that just makes it to where we can fit any type of operator that we need in these machines. Now, starting over here to my left, we don't necessarily have any controls, but we do have our fuel cap opening here. Now, this is gonna be a three and three quarter inch wide opening of the fuel cap here. And once we open this up, we do have a tethered lid so that lid can't go anywhere and you're going to have a fuel capacity of 11.5 gallons. Now when we're talking about fuel consumption, generally on these mowers, depending on the cutting conditions, we're looking at using between 1.1 to 1.9 gallons an hour. So with that 11 and a half gallon tank, if we are in those easy conditions, we can go a full 11 hours. If not, you know, we're going to cut that back down to somewhere around six hours of usage with this mower. Now, right in front of that is going to be our fuel gauge. So very easy to see. We can just look over to our left, see that fuel gauge right there. Very easy to see. Then down below here, we do have a cup holder here on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side of my feet, we do have, do have another little storage compartment. And then right above that is going to be our parking brake. Now, this is just a regular vehicle style parking brake where we just have to push in on the lever drop that down, that releases our parking brake, and then pull up to have that parking brake engaged. Now with the parking brake, you do have to have the brake set to start the machine. So if you get on your mower, you've been driving it around, you go to start it and forgot to set that parking brake, this machine will not start up. So you have to make sure that every time you go to start, we are pulling up on that parking brake. This catch, catches up a lot of people. We get phone calls of, hey, my mower won't start. And a lot of times the thing is, hey, we've just got to set our parking brake. That gets missed a lot. So just keep that in mind. Now, right in front of our parking brake is going to be our deck raise and lower pedal right here. And that is going to correspond with our knob over here on the right hand side on our control panel. So our knob here is going to be adjustable from one inch up to five and a half inches and it is going to be in quarter inch increments and to change that it's very easy we just simply turn our knob here so if i wanted to set this machine at four there's a little arrow we just need to make sure it's pointing at our four then we can push in on our pedal that will raise the deck just a touch and then we have this yellow knob on top that we would turn in the direction that it shows here for unlock and once we were to unlock that, then we could let off and that's going to lower our deck down. Now, if we need to change heights, maybe right there on the fly as we're going, we can simply push in, rotate this dial. Now we're on three. We can let this down and it's going to lower down to three. And then when we're done, ready to put this mower up for the day, maybe we're going onto a trailer and we need a little bit more ground clearance. We can push in with the mower deck, turn our knob back in the lock position, and that's going to lock this up into transport mode. So very easy feature there. That is going to be a spring assisted pedal, spring assisted lift system. And so that is very easy to do right there. Now also over here on my right hand side on this deck specifically, we have our mulch on demand handle here. Now, this is what's going to open and close the deck if you have a mulch on demand deck, which on the Z960Ms, you can get three different style of decks. You can get the 60 inch mulch on demand like we have here, which I'll show more about here in a minute. You can also get a 60 inch side discharge or a 72 inch side discharge, but this is our mulch on demand handle. And if you wanna see more about this, how this works, I've got another video here on the channel. So make sure to check that out, mulch versus side discharge, and that is featuring this machine. So make sure to check that out to see more about this handle, but very easy. We can reach it here from the seat to be able to either open or close the deck, whatever we're needing right there at the handle. Now, moving over here to our right hand side, we've already talked about our height of cut adjustment knob right here. Right next to that is going to be our PTO engagement switch. So this is our blades on and off switch in a more simpler term. So right here, this is going to be forward for on, back for off. Now you will have to have the machine started and the parking brake disengaged to be able to turn those blades on. So if we do have the machine on with the parking brake, but we try to go and engage our blades, it will not engage those blades until that parking brake is off. So the parking brake is crucial to this machine and the way it functions. Now moving back, of course, we do have our key switch here. Then we're also going to have our throttle adjustment right here. And then we have our choke lever, which is a simple pull up for choke, push down for 
to turn that choke off. Now this is not spring assisted. So you do have to keep in mind that once we get that mower started, if we've choked it, that we do have to push that lever back down and in. And then on our display panel here, this is mainly going to be an hour meter, but it's also going to give us some other warning symbols. Right now you can see that the parking symbol is on because our parking brake is on. But if I take that off, then that parking symbol goes off. You'll notice here it's showing that there is an oil light symbol, a wrench for service symbol, a heat symbol, and then just an overall warning symbol right up here that's going to tell us if we have an issue with this machine. So overall, very simple machine, but now that we are right here, I'm gonna go ahead and start this machine up. So I've got our parking brake on. I'm gonna go ahead and put my lever here at about half throttle, pull my choke up, start the machine. Now, one of the things that I'll do here a lot of times is I'll start that machine, hear it trying to fire off, and then while I have the key held, I'll go ahead and start pushing down on my choke lever, and that will start the machine. Now, right here, I've still got our parking brake on. I'm gonna go ahead and try to engage the blades. Right there, they won't engage. So, they will not engage until I were to drop our parking brake. And now, if I wanna engage those blades, Raise the throttle up a little bit, turn those on. And then there's how the mower sounds with the blades on. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn those back off. Easy as that. And then as far as driving, we just pull our levers in. We can move, drive. Do a full turn. And then when I were to stop, I'd put my handles out, pull my brake up, and then turn off the key. So very simple to drive, very easy controls. Now let's go ahead and talk about the frame and the deck. Now, since this is a commercial grade mower, everything about the build of this mower is going to be heavy duty. As you can notice here, we've got cast iron front casters on the front here so for our swivel wheels at the front you are going to have cast iron forks and then you're also going to have cast iron frame pieces that run into this heavy duty c channel frame you'll also notice here that on the lifters for our deck these are going to be cast iron as well and everything is a built and welded solid frame once we get past our front casters this frame runs all the way out to the rear of the machine built with that heavy duty steel so you are gonna have a very solid and heavy machine that is meant for that commercial application. Now, once we move to the deck here, this is gonna be our seven iron pro mulch on demand deck that is on this machine. So like we talked about, the mulch on demand is gonna be the system that's built into the deck that'll open and close to close off those blades and close our outer chute to turn this mower into a mulcher with the flip of a switch. So very nice, very easy. Now this is the pro seven iron deck so if you go with a side discharge either the 60 or the 72 this will also be the pro series seven iron now what the seven iron means is th is that this deck is a fully stamped seven gauge piece of steel so very heavy material here it's going to have the step it's also going to have the four casters on each corner and also the heavy duty front rollers all to help with anti-scalping whenever we're using this mower. You're also gonna have weld mounts here on the side to add to that strength and durability of our edging side here. You're also going to have dual captured anti-scalping wheels, which means that we do have frame metal pieces on each side. So on some mowers, down in lower classes, these will only have one bracket holding them on, but these have two to make sure that we're not bending or tearing off these anti-scalping wheels. Now, as far as the makeup of the spindles of this mower, you are gonna have the heavy duty cast housing spindles also, which is going to add to the life of that mower. Having those heavy duty spindles is a big deal whenever spindles are one of the main things on our mowers that we have to worry about. These spindles are also gonna be greasable. So right here on top of each spindle you will have a grease circ so we see one here we can get to the middle one by raising up on our foot platform which is also a very nice feature of this machine the easy open middle foot platform 
and then we will have one also on the right hand side that we'll have to grease as well now the other two main greasing points on this machine are going to be at our front casters so you'll have one on each side that we need to be making sure and greasing those to keep those bearings lubricated that are in those housings as those wheels are constantly turning and moving all the time whenever you're running this mower so we need to make sure that we're taking care of those and taking care of our spindles now also on this mower you are going to have of course the heavy duty deck belt the nice thing about that is you do have a routing map built right here on top of the deck with this sticker so if you have to change this belt a lot maybe you're one of those people that run this mower commercially run it all the time and you do run into those instances where you have to change that belt a good idea would be to take a picture of that sticker keep that in your phone keep that picture safe somewhere in case you are one that happens to rub that sticker off you always have that with you now going along with the frame another couple of nice features here is that you are going to have tie down points on this mower you'll have one over here and then also one on the other side as well then there are multiple places there in the front as you saw in the foot platform to be able to tie this mower off so whenever you're hauling this you do have the right equipment right here on deck to tie this mower down now you're also on the z960m going to have these counterweights here at the back these are going to be on most of the commercial grade mowers in the john deere lineup but these are just going to add that extra weight for that extra stability with this mower when we're talking about being on those hills and inclines and so on and so forth this will help to offset the weight of the deck and the heavy front end that you have on this mower now the other thing i'd point out is tire options so in the front we're always going to have the no flat front casters meaning that these do not have an air core in them they do not have a valve stem but at the rear here you are going to have the option to either go with the michelin x twills like we have here these are going to be a no flat tire as well. As you can see, they're made up of these rubber spokes. So if you do happen to get a puncture or a tear or a hole, you can keep running this tire with no downtime at all. Or you can go with a pneumatic tire. Um, so then you can adjust air pressure depending on the job here. These Michelin X twills are going to allow for more power to the ground as they do run a flatter bottom surface whenever we're running. They're also going to have a little wider stance here that's going to stay wide rather than narrowing up whenever we're on hills and such like a pneumatic tire would. So you keep more power to the ground and you have, of course, like I said, that great runtime ability because you will not have flats with these tires, but you do have the option, of course, to go pneumatic if you'd like to. And last but not least, let's go over a few specs and dimensions and warranty on this machine. So as far as specs go, let's talk about dimensions. So we are looking at an overall length of 84 inches, an overall height with our ROPS up at 73 inches and at 47 inches if we have the ROPS down. Now, as far as width goes with a 60 inch deck and the chute folded out, you're looking at 74 inches wide. And whenever we raise that chute up, we can generally get between nine to 10 inches shorter. So you could probably get that closer down to 65 once we raise that chute up. And then if you have a 72 inch deck, you're gonna be looking at 86 inches and then probably getting down to about 77 when we raise that chute up. Now, as far as weight goes, what we're looking at is with the 60 inch deck, we're gonna be looking at 1,250 pounds. And then as we go up to the 72, you're looking at 1,340 pounds. So very heavy mowers here, very heavily built. Now, now, like I said, fuel capacity here, we're looking at 11 and a half gallons. On the oil capacity, you're just a touch over two quarts. And on that hydraulic system there, you're looking at five and a half quarts. So just things to be looking at, things so you know those capacities on this machine. Now, as far as warranty goes, this machine here is gonna have a three year or 1200 hour warranty, whichever comes first. And then in the first two years of that, there is no hour limit. So if you were a commercial operator that ran this for two years and you had 1300 hours on it you are still going to be covered within those first two years but for most people they're going to hit that three-year mark before they hit the 1200 hour and that is going to be a bumper to bumper warranty that covers everything except for your normal wear items so belts blades tires things like that that warranty will not cover but Overall, guys, that's it on the Z960M. Hope you liked this video. I hope this helped you out. If it did, we just asked you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, guys, if you need any parts for your John Deere equipment, make sure to go check us out at 247parts.com. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey, guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one.
buy your parts right up here, and subscribe right here.